how do I make an interesting intro? Oh, I know. Let's point out one of the funniest bugs I've seen in quite a while. Well, Evil West has an arachnophobia mode, which removes all spiders from the game. Spoiler alert, you don't actually face off against any spider creatures. Sorry to all you Rule 34 Elise fans. The bug is, if you turn off the arachnophobia mode and turn it back on, it doubles the number of spiders in the world. Yeah, essentially creeping the crap out of me the first time I found this and then proceeded to create comic relief every time I ran into these patches of eight-legged friends. Unfortunately, it seems to only occur once, like you can't just do this infinitely and continuously double the amount of spiders on screen to the point where you're breaking the game. I hope they don't fix this. I hope it becomes a staple of the game, to be honest. But I think it's about time we get into the review. Hold, hold, hold on. D did I forget to mention that the game is co-op? Because it is. I'm not going to talk about it. Not in this review, because I don't have any friends to play with. So if that's what you're after, go fuck off. No, no, seriously, I'd recommend watching another video. Evil West is, and I quote, a third-person shooter role-playing action-adventure fighting game developed by Flying Wild Hog, whose only real other notable game is... Well, nothing, because I hadn't heard of any of these games prior to the research on this one. Therefore, they must be bad, because that's how logic works these days. Evil West is set in a fantasy world of cowboys, demons, and vampires. If I had to compare this to any other game, it'd probably be Devil May Cry. Not because of the fact both games are about killing demons, while that is a similarity, it's mostly because of the combat. Both have arena-like stages, flashy moves and combos, where you can dance between enemies using a balance of melee and ranged attacks, with the only real difference being that Evil West doesn't have a style system. But that's not saying that these games are a carbon copy. Evil West does enough to distinguish itself from Devil May Cry and other games alike. The combat in Evil West, at least for me, is the primary reason for playing the game. Given that the game is a hack and slash brawler action adventure game, there is nothing really new added to the formula, rather just different takes on the popular combat mechanics that are staple in the genre. You have dodging, blocking, parrying, dashes, pulls and interrupts to name the basic mechanics of the combat. You also have an arsenal of ranged weapons which I won't mention until later but essentially all serve different purposes to either interrupt enemies or pick off pesky enemies attacking from afar or just straight up murder everything on your screen. Where the game really freshens up this experience is through the way you switch between melee and ranged in combat encounters. It becomes almost like a dance, a flow of switching in and out of ranged and melee that just feels so great, especially when you pull it off perfectly. Everything feels so meaty and impactful from the sound effects to the screen effects. It just ticks boxes in my monkey brain. Wow, so flashy and so cool. But that isn't to say that Evil West's combat lacks depth, because to be honest, I can't remember the last game that managed to keep combat fresh throughout the entire playthrough of the game. Evil West is constantly introducing new mechanics and abilities at every turn, to the point where it's a little overwhelming, but once you get the hang of the basic combat, the game just adds more and more layers to the foundation. New abilities and weapons to use in certain situations, meaning I never felt bored or tired of using the skill set that I had because I was always unlocking something new, like a new block, dash, and pull mechanic with the electric gauntlet, or a frickin' flamethrower. If the missions weren't rewarding me with new and refreshing unlocks, it became my own choice from the skill tree and purchasable upgrades for the weapons that really helped keep the game fresh. The ability upgrades generally added new skills or furthered the combo potential of the current skills creating a larger skill expression when it came to using your favourite combat mechanics. The weapon upgrades on the other hand were not just minor upgrades. Most of them made dramatic changes to the way a weapon worked. For example, you can upgrade the rifle into a railgun, where you can hold down the trigger to deal massive damage and pierce enemies in a straight line. The grenade can be upgraded from a basic explosion to an electric tornado. The developers have just done an astonishing job here with these upgrades. At a surface level, the combat is smooth, responsive, and generally does a great job at putting the player's intentions into actions. I say generally because 
I do have one minor issue with the combat that really only occurred a couple of times and in saying that there is a feature to fix this issue. That issue being aim snapping. Unfortunately when fighting so many enemies of varying sizes in a small arena, it can be difficult to snap to the target you want to hit, especially if you have ones close up in your face, making it feel like you're really fighting the system. But again, this only really occurs in some of the arenas, where it is necessary for you to deal with the guys far away from you, and you know, you could always get good and turn off aim assist. Yeah, I never did. Look, Evil West's combat is one of the most satisfying, over the top and exciting combats to play with. I think it looks extremely well, satisfies my monkey brain with flashy moves and impactful sound effects, and you're not left getting sick of the constant upgrades and new enemies to face throughout the game. I'm not going to say a lot about the story because it is really just a means to an end. It does enough to provide motivation and interest in the world for sure but it's not the main pull into the game. It's a supporting act. It enriches the game by justifying your slaughter of the demons and vampires alike. The plot is that a creepy vampire called Felicity is trying to wipe out the human race in a power struggle that has been supposedly going on for decades. It's your job as Jesse Rentier to stop her. Jesse is not the chosen one. He's just some guy with a powerful tool for killing demons. The game does a great job at getting you to care for some of the characters involved in this story in such a short time. For example, Amelia Blackwell, the doc, goes from being a stickler for the rules and guidelines to being more of an unhinged and relaxed character by the end of it. Well, as relaxed as you can be when vampires are trying to exterminate the human race. In saying this, I couldn't sympathise with a certain character's death because... I don't think we had really built up a strong enough relationship with them yet. While they did have a lot of screen time, I just don't think there was enough chemistry there to actually care about this person passing away. Evil West is not about the story. If you're looking for a strong narrative game about hunting vampires, this isn't the one. But in saying that, I think the story and characters are interesting enough to keep you entertained and interested throughout the campaign. The world design of Evil West is pretty linear. There aren't really any open world areas to explore. They're all linear levels with hidden rooms and secrets scattered along the path. And I use the term secret lightly because if you look just about everywhere you go, there are these flashing white chains that signify where you can go and what you can do, which really takes the secret out of secret chests when there is practically a giant flashing sign signifying that there is something that I can interact with here. My only thought is that someone playtested the game, realised how difficult it was to know when, where and what you could actually interact with in the world, so they made sure even the dumbest of the dumb, a video game reviewer, could complete the game. In saying that though, there was one time in my entire playthrough where if there hadn't been flashing white chains, I genuinely wouldn't have figured out where to go and what to do. All of this aside, the level design is done extremely well and differs for each level. The game breaks up the combat arenas with some puzzles, small exploration, secrets to find and gauntlets of enemies to fight before usually throwing you into some sort of boss fight. I think the game is extremely well paced. Just when you start to get stressed out from the combat, you're given a chance to relax and explore the linear levels before being thrown back into the carnage to prevent you from boredom. I think it's safe to say that the visuals of Evil West really speak for themselves. This game looks astonishing. Each of the environments feels different from the last. While some environments are similar, they all have noticeable differences. The developers have done a fantastic job with the world design and visuals of this game. Overall, Evil West is a well above average game. It's visually impressive, has a solid narrative, and an amazing combat system. It's not a game that will revolutionize the world nor does it do anything to be remembered by. It's just the most 8 out of 10 game there is. I couldn't recommend this game enough, as it's just interesting and enjoyable experience overall. Thanks for watching. If you could leave a like and subscribe, as well as let me know your thoughts on Evil West down in the comment section below. The next game will likely be Need for Speed Unbound, so ding the notification button so you know when that video drops.